All right now, all right now. What it do, what it is, what it ain't, what it's going to be. Hey, 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 hey. It's another episode of Jazzy and Facts on Wax. Yes, with sir. Special guest DJ checking yes. in with us. DJ Monte, ladies and gentlemen. DJ Monte, what it what up, do? What up, what up? How y'all doing? Man, I, man, I feel like I need a bullhorn the way I get it. It's going to be one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? Man, cool, man. Right here working, man. What's going on with y'all? Y'all feeling man, all right? We chilling, man. man. Chilling. And before we get started, just gonna ask, you know, how your fam doing with, you know, the COVID and all that going on, how everything's going for you. All right, everybody good right now, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been keeping them out of harm's way, hopefully. You know, I've been in and out, but everybody been fine so far, you know, around here. So everybody's good. Absolutely. Okay. I know Atlanta. Atlanta's wide open, so you. I know you ain't been in these clubs, or you ain't. You been at the crib with the fam? No, no sir. I'm not going to no club. It ain't worth it for me. It know? ain't worth it. Nah, it ain't. It ain't. It, ain't. It, it, it like if they don't got no vaccine for it, and everybody so called got their own solution of what they feel like coronavirus. I don't want to be a test dummy and figure out the hard way. Right. But right. Yeah, only place I honestly been is the gym. That okay. well. I, I can't lie, because when the gym opened back up, I, I went straight to it. You know I went saying? straight to it. You know, shit, yeah. you never know when this motherfucker finna cold back there. Everybody got out of quarantine looking all swole, like, right. mm-hmm. built way, but like, right, right. in the fat way. So, you right, know, in the right. fat way. We ain't trying to get the fat way. <laughs> nah, I ain't trying to be like that at all. We ain't trying to get... We see, I'll see our, um, our mayor got it. Keisha. Oh, yeah, I know, right? I, I'm, trying to figure out how she, I'm trying to figure out how she got it because... She been outside. She been outside. Yeah, but I'm saying all that wear your mask and everything mm-hmm. else, stay home crap yeah. that she used to preach to us when this was going on, and now you got it. But I'm just trying to figure it out. She said she ain't had no symptoms or nothing. Yeah, that like shit crazy. That hey. shit is crazy. But all right, Monte, so let's take it back to the beginning. When did you first start DJing? I started DJing at the age of 15. So um, I was DJing really probably a little bit before that because um, – my mom, she had a fashion show. She had DJ Will there, an old um, you know, ATL legend. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, dang, I want to do that shit. I think I was about, I want to say 11 or 12. But then, you know, I started going to her house, started learning and stuff. So around 12, I figured I wanted to DJ. Yeah. I got introduced yeah. to a DJ Jelly MC Assault mixtape in middle school. So, okay. yeah, that was about the age, about 12, 13, maybe. And so, man. And you, you from, and you, you, so you from Atlanta? Born and raised. Born and raised. What middle school, what middle school you went to? I went to a couple of middle schools. I went to uh, Bear Creek, which is out there uh, well, out here on the south side. And then I went to uh, Atlanta Prep. I, went, I was in private okay. school for the majority of my life. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and so I, was DJ Monte always your, your DJ name, or did you have something at first that you came with? I could never figure out my real DJ name, like, cause at first it was uh, I had a couple of names. I had named myself DJ Automatic. Uh, Automatic, okay. Yeah, uh, what else? Something else, but then they were like, "Nah, them lame." So then I just stuck with, I just said, Much, "Yeah, I just use my name." <laughs> I don't know. I, I ain't with right. hey, nah, all that shit, so I just use my name. But yeah, I've been DJing since. I mean, I've been wanting to DJ since I was twelve, but I started DJing with Jelly. And, uh, big on records from the age of fifteen. And what you what you was what you was using? What was your uh, first equipment? Well, this was before any controller or anything else yeah. like that. I was using a uh, turntable. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been around when the you first. You remember? You remember your first mixer? You remember what that was? <clears throat> uh, well, I never own nothing. I use jelly stuff all the time. Okay. I'm going on here house every day. I got the age of fifteen at the school, so my mom, yeah. said, you know, she allowed me to go over there. She ain't know who he was. Yeah, but she dropped me off over there, so I was over there using his shit. He that's had a that's a hell of a mentor you got there. Man, hell yeah. of a mentor. Yeah. That's yeah. a hell of a mentor. You did all right. You picked the you picked the right person. <laughs> I know, right? That's my brother, man. So uh, we were using the uh, what it was the Jazzy Jeff mixer. He had all kind of mixes that was coming. Yeah. I wasn't stunned that shit. I was just trying to learn how to mix two records. Absolutely. Yes. And so, so Jelly was pretty much like your mentor, and was he like your intake or your leeway in getting to Oom Camp, or how did you start with Oom Camp? Well, you know, uh, Jelly was big on records. You know, Jelly was big big on was the the uh, the uh, money man. You know, behind DJ Jelly MC Assault. So, um, 
Jilla was already affiliated with Oomph. We ain't, Oomph didn't start the record label until like two years after I came around. Big on mm. Records. I was in high school still when we had started Big on Records. And um, that's how it really started. You know, yeah. Oomph was just, a, you know, Jelly and them was already running their mixtapes around in the city and the streets and stuff. You know, you, I would listen to King Edward J and all that, but for some odd reason, I just wanted to be with Jelly and how he mixed was something crazy. Yeah. It was a new way of listening to it. I remember moving to Atlanta like in 99, 2000. That's when uh, Baby D was going crazy. We yeah. lived on the yeah. east side. We moved to the east side. And uh, Baby D was going crazy. Uh, Hitman Sammy Sam was going crazy. Mm -hmm. And just that whole Atlanta movement back then, like, can you kind of like talk about that a little bit on how like, you know, being a part of that, how we pretty much, you know, transform Atlanta music to still what it is today? Man, we used to beat the, sh the clubs up, like me, Baby D, uh, Lil C, everybody like that used to hang with us. So we used to find out what's popping in the club that night, what's going on, what what club we need to be at. We used to go to everything. Um, we used to be at 559 with Jello with DJ and we all clicked up. Like, we, I was in the club at the age of 15, like grown yeah, club, strip yeah. club. So we rolled deep. We had big on record jackets, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, uh, most of Baby D's songs came from us being in the club. That then niggas used to scream east side, west side. Now that yeah, kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that's what we got the east side, west side, ATL hole, and all that shit. So, you know, being in the club, well, we used to go everywhere. Like, yeah. it didn't matter high school parties, we was in the high school parties, college parties, club night. We'll be all day just going to parties and stuff like that. My bad, y'all. I'm a dog. Like to lick my water. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog you got? Uh, a Frenchie. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you What's just his name? Humphrey. Humphrey. <laughs> yeah. A little yeah. right there. Yeah. Them motherfuckers run you about twenty five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 It's but... the rich people dogs. Yeah, yeah. Rich people. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we used to get in the club, man. Like that's why majority of our music came from. We in the like, club. Yeah. yeah. But if people didn't let us in, we we forced our way in the club. Nice. Like, it is serious. Like they don't rex for coming in now. We. We forced our way in the clubs, radio, everywhere. Mm. And that's how we really done set the way for everybody because nowadays, really, rap, like East Side, West Side, music like that wasn't on the radio. We had to fight. Wow. You know, wow. That's you know, crazy. Atlanta, Atlanta was just straight up hip hop, like New York records. Like you couldn't, you wouldn't even be able to hear no Atlanta records like that. But we broke all that through. Yeah. Yeah. You might hear a kilo or something like that, but as far mm -hmm. as street records, you wouldn't hear that. You know what I mean? So we paid the way for all that because we fought for that. Me and Jelly, well, Jelly Mangle was on the radio at first. He was on Hot 97 or something so like that. So he was sneaking in some of y'all records. Yeah, that's how we broke all our stuff. Yeah, that's right? cool. Yeah. yeah. See, I uh, ain't know that. I ain't know that. Yeah, Triple J. And um, I was on B-103 with uh, Street. Street finally allowed me on the radio, you know, with him. And so we were just playing our records, and we, that's how we broke Lil John, Outkast. You know, yeah. we started. We we put in the groundwork for a lot of these artists to really don't. Even, all you gotta do is just have a hot record now. You know, yeah. we had to fight for that shit because yeah. we had to fight for Biggie and Tupac. Like that, they weren't playing like no South records. So that's wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, we just, we, we fought. And now it's nothing but Atlanta music on the damn radio. <laughs> hey, they can't afford it. They can't afford Atlanta right now. Nah, Atlanta had talent, though. Atlanta always been on some hard shit. It's just, we just not getting open to it. You know, we, yeah. you know, once Atlanta blew, we didn't pop, but all kind of motherfuckers came out of Atlanta. See, I would, person, I would personally say, like, Outkast, Outkast was, like, the forefront of, Making people, Outkast and, and JD was like the one of the biggest groups in the game. You man, know, they came out of Atlanta. You got another group that one of the biggest R and B groups in the game, TLC. They came of out course, of course, of course. Yeah, had always been a big hub of music. You know what I'm saying? You had Crisscross that jumped it off. They was on some West Coast shit, but mm -hmm. we was on some real street shit. Like yeah, East Side. That's what we saw in the club. That's what niggas mm -hmm. was screaming. When we were playing three six mafia, three six mafia, you take the club up and all that shit was just not popping in. Speaking of three six, man, you had you had one with three, a couple, a couple of three six too. 
And man, so let's let's talk about your producing career. Like, when did you start DJing and producing at the same time, or was that something you kind of gathered like along the way? Um, well, I was making beats at the age of nine, like just okay. straight up beats, not playing music. But um, I kind of used making beats, like I I kind of used DJing into making beats. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I DJ, but I'd be trying to go back and make some that go with it. But I started producing like two or three years after I started DJing. Okay. I started locking in the DJing and I'm doing clubs and shit like that. So then I'm like, man, I want to make beats. Yeah, yeah. So then I started making beats and um finally allowed me in his studio. I was doing everything and I was down there like the intern in the studio. I track out all the records, I program it all, I do everything just so I can be in there to learn something. Yeah. That's how, you know, that's just... It, it, the rest it, is history. Oh, yeah, it just stuck with me from then. What was that? What was that one record? What was that one record you produced, or the first record you produced, and you like, oh yeah, I'm 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 here now. Ah, uh, like maybe you couldn't avoid it on the radio, like it was always somewhere, and you like, yeah, this. ATL. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's an SMS. So it was a little meme going around saying what should be Atlanta anthem. Yeah. Everybody was like, ATL. Like yeah. it was like the number one voted, this should be the anthem. <laughs> yeah. See, folks don't know that with Lil John on the hook. Like we mm -hmm. like we did that like on Martin Luther King on this little ugly ass mic. We all was in the goddamn room. He was just screaming ATL ho and we just that was my first I was so excited when I did that shit. I was like, yeah. damn, this shit gonna be crazy. But you knew it was about to be crazy. That's one of them nights at the studio. You y'all just knew like this shit gone. Yeah, this shit gone, cause you know we had past, we had everybody on that motherfucker. Yeah. We had Pastor Troy, RG, yeah, you know, our shit. So I was like, boy, this shit gonna go crazy. And you play that in the club, boy, these folks went ham on that shit. Yeah. So it went no, it went no other producers like you looked up to, like they kind of challenged you to, you know what I'm saying, to 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 make a different sound or or search for different sounds. Um, to be honest with you, yes, uh, Dr. Dre, I still look okay. up. To and uh, DJ Paul and, and Juicy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Juicy Jay. Like, Memphis always had a sound for me. Like, I love, yeah. They I'm, always from, I'm, from, I'm from Memphis. Yeah, so Memphis. There's, there's, yeah, I'm from Memphis, so, you know what I'm saying? Now, I, I appreciate that, because we had, I'm going to let you finish your statement, then I'm going to. No, Memphis, Memphis always had the sound, you know what I'm saying? Which done help our Atlanta sound, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because they started with that. Like Three Six Mafia was on some real street shit. Like when they first had their first tell the club up, not the one that yes. got commercialized, the very first one. First one, yes. Yeah, that's what turned us out. That very that's what had Atlanta going crazy because some kind of way that shit done made it to Atlanta and we were playing that shit all high school parties. Yeah. And we were like going crazy. So that's what inspired me to make our music like Kind of like that. If you listen to like East Side versus West Side remix, it's all some old, you know, Reese's Mafia type shit. So Memphis yeah. definitely influenced this whole Atlanta movement, but we just took it and added our shit to it. Man, like Memphis, I, I just want Memphis to always it. had little samples and shit like that. We yeah. took our shit and made our shit like yeah on some other shit. More yeah, so you know, that's dance too. Yeah, not just yeah. fight and, and shoot a nigga. Well, at, at, first, at, first, at, first, at first, it was on that though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what. Like, if you ain't had, it, if you couldn't get that, then you like, you know, shit. Your record ain't nothing. Yeah, right. pretty yeah. much. Now then, I think I think a lot of them that sample sound from Memphis. You know, we're a blue city, so mm -hmm. we gonna incorporate somehow, some way, some, you know, some David Ruffin or something. You know what I'm saying? Three six. Like you said, three six, uh, DJ Squeaky, all those guys from back then, they 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 been they been playing with those sounds. And now you can see the new producers, you got the take keys and the uh D Max and all those young guys that's killing it right now. So and that's kind of the, the three six sample. That's the DJ Paul sample right there. You know what right. I'm saying? It's just a modern day sound. Yeah, it definitely you know? is. It just, it just repeats itself. All over again, just like how Mustard and recreated the West Coast sound. Yes, yes, so, yeah. Yeah, just recreated. Like, even for us, though, we got sample, too. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. uh, Migos did the walkie-talkie. So that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that recreated a whole another sound for Atlanta, too. So. Yeah. And so Atlanta moving into that 
snap. It went from like gangster music to like the snap era and dance era. So talk about that. Like I guess like link it up with Unk and how that that basically because it changed the music in Atlanta and it, over the world. You know. Yeah, so you, you did walk it out, right? No, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did walk it out. Yeah, you did walk it out. So. Yeah. Yeah, talk to us about that, man. I know that shit was. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Um, actually, I had did that beat three years before it came out. Before Unk okay. even really heard it, you know. So um, we was in the studio on my birthday because I didn't have shit to do. You know, I was. Yeah. Shout out to you being a Sagittarius yeah. too. I saw that. I said, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm you, December third. Got... I'm December third. So I was like, oh yeah, this is official. Oh yeah, shit. You, you, what up, Sage? And listen, and listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I I love Jay, so I know y'all got the same birthday. I'm like, oh yeah, my nigga right here. I'm fucking <laughs> with him. You know Legends what I mean? made in December. <laughs> yeah, it up. please believe, it up. please believe. It. But nah, we were working on my birthday. I was just grinding. You know, I'm a workaholic, so I was like, man, fuck it. I don't, I ain't trying to do nothing. Like, so we recorded on my birthday, and then um. The so you didn't think at that moment you didn't you didn't, you wouldn't you didn't really know how big it would be or. Oh, no, I knew how big it was. I kept yeah. telling Unk because Unk was like, man, you know, he couldn't believe that we couldn't put out a dance record because we always <laughs> been a street label. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, damn, man. We fin-. He was like, let me hear this again. And I played it. I said, Unk, this is it, man. I'm trying to tell you this is it. It took about nine months for it to break because I helped break it. Me and yeah. Unk. And, uh, and it took nine months for me bashing in the club. I was DJing, so I just kept playing that shit. Kept that's playing. why. That's why. That's why we created this platform, bro, to to help people or remind people or help people to understand. Right. We, we're naturally blessed with an ear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So nine times out of ten, if you're really working, you really, you know, what I'm saying about this this DJ lifestyle and everything. You that's is natural. It comes natural. We yeah. know it hit, but you know what I'm saying. As soon as we hear one. Yeah, no. that's, that's very true. Like, I still have a great ear for this music shit. There's a lot of DJs that don't have good, you know, ears. I'd be like, man, what y'all hear in certain yeah. shit? But, you know, I, I, for me, I say I have an amazing ear for this music that come out. Like, even today, you know what I'm saying? I've been around music for generations of shit. Like, I've been around for a long time. Oh, you blessed for sure. Yeah, definitely. And so, um, I have an ill man. I, I I can honestly say that not even stroke my own ego, but I have yeah. a music like that is here. Did any did you play any instruments or like did anybody play like do any music in your family? Uh, they said my daddy's song. You know, I never really know that because I, I haven't met my dad. Like he uh, shot himself when I was five, so oh, man. I grew up so pretty much without knowing my daddy, but um. I knew my stepdad, but I don't know. I played the snare when I was okay. Yeah, that, so I don't know why why I can't sing, but I just love music. So you just you just you just played the snare like in what high school or middle school? But I could okay. never read the music. I was just me too. Music. I could never read. I played the, I, <laughs> yo. I played the trumpet. I could never read, but I used to be able to when they practice like when we practiced. Yeah, I was able to hear what they was playing. Yeah, and then I just kind of mimicked it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what I did. The same thing. We playing is okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh, and I'm okay. flipping the pages when y'all when they, <laughs> you know, how they used to flip the page. Like I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, look, they was somebody used to have to tell me to turn my page because my teacher, you know, I'm just sitting there just rocking. You know, I'm yeah. like, okay, shit, whatever. But yeah. I only did one year of that. After that, I just like fuck the instruments. But I was in the sports too. I played. I tried to play football and uh. High school, but then I was like, man, I want DJ, man. I don't want yeah. that shit. So that's what happened with me. You rocking with the Falcons? Who, me? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Where you from? He said, of course. So I, I grew up in Memphis then when I was in 1999. So around 9, 10, I moved to Atlanta. So I was a Falcons fan up until Vic happened. When Vic left, I left. Well, shit, I ain't, hey, I can't even blame you, but shit. I but I always rock with the Cowboys, though. I always rock with the Cowboys. So that was my backup team, and now they my team team. So. I don't fuck with Matt Ryan. I wish they'd get rid of him. But shit, if we win it, then I'm rocking with him. But, right. you know, they're still my team, though. I still Hey, so them. so what y'all – I heard something about Atlanta niggas kind of felt felt the way years after um Dominique, what they did to Dominique. They traded Dominique back in the day. 
Oh, with the house, yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah. Uh, man, I don't even remember that. To be honest. Okay, okay. I thought. I mean, I, I've I've heard that before. Like they, it was. I don't know. This is an issue. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah, it might. Out. It might have been. You know, but I wasn't. I don't think I was into sports like that. I was into Dominique and Jordan, but I wasn't into. Like knowing like what happened, history. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was too much outside or something like that. You yeah. know. Who's your Who's your Who's your top five five rappers? Top five rappers of what? Of oh. all time. Oh. Gotta be more specific. <laughs> yeah, of all of all right, time. Of right now, no, of, 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 of all time, of all all time, all time. All time, I'm gonna have to say. Shit, that's a tough one. I'm uh, I'm gonna have uh, pop. Okay. I'm gonna have Snoop in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Andre three thousand. Absolutely. Was that three? Three. You got two more. Can I just put them as a group, like just outgas? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it. Like they both made each other, so you know, I. I don't they, wanna... they're a group. They're a group. Yeah, outcast. Yeah, outcast. So I'm gonna put outcast. You got two more. Uh, uh, um, let me think. Damn. It's all it's all yeah, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> all time. Um I'm gonna say Biggie. Biggie. And my last one, I will say. Fuck man, my bad. It's taking a little long. No, oh, you time. cool. You don't supposed good. to rush on this question. <laughs> yeah, we can go. Yeah, cause you kinda you kinda you kinda uh let me see. Through y'all, through yeah, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I gotta make sure look, man, this jazz and facts. We gotta make sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's I say factual, factual. I'm gonna say um my last one, I'm gonna put uh Fuck it, I don't, I don't really know what my fifth one is, but I right, we'll hold on. We got four in. If you think of it during the, just yell the motherfucker out while we. <laughs> I'm gonna say tip. It out. I, I put tip in there. Okay, tip. Yeah. Tip. Yeah. Now go on transition, Jazz. Go. What you about to say? <laughs> yeah, you mentioned tip, so huh? you know he didn't call fifty out. Oh yeah, well shit, tip got the bangers. He got. Hit. He got the bangers. He got tip the bangers. Got it automatic. They, they can go toe to toe now. I, I, I believe that. If anybody can call him out, T.I. could call him out. I believe it. He, he can call him out. He did. He know what he got. That's why he yeah. calling him out. He got yeah. hits. He yeah. loaded up. He loaded yeah. up. He loaded up. Man. He yeah. got too many of them. Okay, so let's take it back. We went from, you know, um to the snap era. So now, you know, after the snap era, during the kind of the dancing era, uh, Flo Rida and T-Pain happened. And Lord, I remember being in college and hearing this drop. And seeing like all the girls. First of all, apple bottoms was the thing. You yeah, know, it was yeah. the, it was the legit like oh, gotta get the apple bottoms. Yeah, so the is. song, the relevancy of the song, the timing of the song, like everything was just it just I felt like with that song being dropped at that time, it just made sense and it did crazy, still doing crazy. So talk right. about that a little bit about linking up with Florida and T Pain and just you know the whole movement. Man, and I tell everybody this, I say, man, to be honest with y'all, that was a uh, Paul Wall song first, you know? Really? Uh, yeah, wow. no disrespect for Paul Wall. And I understood where he was coming from. Like, he was like, that record's gonna make him too pop. Wow. I'm like, damn, come on, Paul, you know, shit. You know, I yeah. need you to do this shit. And that's when he was going crazy, <laughs> too. Yeah, because yeah. he killed it. Like, he did good on the song. He actually rocked yeah. the song, so. Wow. Juvenile wanted because it was Juvenile on the record with Paul Wall. Paul Wall and Juvie. Juvie wanted it and Mike Cameron like, nah, you know what? Get to the dude named Flo Rider. Like, who is that? And I was just, my mind, that was my, the back of my head. No, I was like, I yeah, that. yeah, no, nah, I feel you, right. <laughs> right, I ain't want no disrespect on that either, but you know. No, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, so yeah. When, I, when he said that, he sent me what Flo Rider did. I said, oh my God, this shit out of here. When I first heard it, I said, this shit, out of here. But then, you know, I didn't know until I finally met Flo Rida when he came up from Florida, Miami. Florida, yeah. He was showing me all the girls on YouTube just going crazy to this shit. I said, oh, God, this shit, out of here. Man. <laughs> so, so, so Mike Karen made the executive play? Mike Karen did it, man. He did it. That's he respect. Put, put Shout out to Mike Karen for that. Yeah, definitely. Big I, dog. That's a big dog move. Yeah, I had sent him a, a whole CD of 
Notice I said CD because we were yeah. mailing right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, we were mail I had to mail my CD to him all the way in California. So I I, I mailed him the CD. And uh, that was the only beat on there like that. That's crazy. The only beat. But, and he picked that out. He was like, send me that. Send me that track out. I said, okay, cool. Yeah. And I sent it over to him. Next thing you know, shit, that shit been in all kind of movies. I don't know what records it broke, but. Yeah. And did that start? Go ahead, Jazz. I'm sorry. Did that start like your uh, relationship with T Pain or how like you and T Pain ended up linking up? Well, actually, me and Pain um, linked up before that because we had did the two step remix. You know, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was before that, but yeah, that was all yeah, in the same. But then me and Pain were just doing a lot of records together. Like he did the dollar record. Uh, who the fuck is that with me? When I did the. Uh, um, the uh, the Flow Riders record, of course. We have done records with T Pain and stuff, so you know, I we just been had a relationship. That that all came from me DJing though. Folks knew that I was a DJ in the city. And he knew who I was. I ran across him actually without even knowing him coming out of the and that's how we set up the remix. He was like, DJ, one time. Yeah. <laughs> like, know me. All right, what's up? Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. we made that play happen. How how was it when you first when you first found out you was nominated for a Grammy? What was that feeling like? Man, I can't even honestly tell you that because I really just I didn't know how to feel. Even when it went number one for ten weeks, I was like, damn, this shit is surreal. Yeah, this I, I just couldn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Until that money came in, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this real. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I was like, Well, I gotta get some more records like Yeah, that. right. You know what I'm saying? So that's always been my goal. To get more shit like that. Yeah. What you working on right now? You got an artist you working on that you that you you may feel the same way, like, oh he he got up next. Or yeah, she we, or I she. Got, um we got a couple of artists that we're working with that I feel like that. We got um, Shantae Renee, like we worked with her, and um, Wix, um, Big Corey, which is actually Unk's son. Mm -hmm. um, another artist, uh, his name Quake. Well, that's what he go by for me. I don't know what his name gonna be when he rap, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, we got another artist, DG Chuck, rap artist. And we put out a Baby D project too, which is actually good. But, okay. Uh, yeah. That's what we're working on, and I got some other stuff outside production coming. Like what, man? Listen, you gotta, you, yeah, know. you gotta, you gotta give us some. Come you on, gonna, give us some. You know, give us. You gonna, you gonna see it? It's, it's gonna come. Yeah. It's gonna okay. Come real soon. It's really like around the corner. So you know. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see it. Who would you, who would you want to work with at this point in your career? Like you, I you know what I'm saying? Somebody, Rihanna, I lock her ass in the room ASAP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, know you think she gonna? You think she gonna get back in the booth though? I don't give a damn. You've been on a hiatus. Y'all ask me who would I want to work with. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's Rihanna, yeah, you like, yeah. She, even if she did come out the booth, let me mm -hmm. just get the phones out of it. Yeah. That's all I would ask. Absolutely. That's real. Gotta speak that into existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got to. Man, yeah. you was you you and your family were chilling during quarantine. I wanted to ask you, you how many kids you have? How many kids you have? I got four. The boys? Oh, me and my girl, so we got five. I got five. Five. Okay. You have you have boys? Uh four uh four boys and one girl. Okay, so with your boys, you know, I'm asking DJs this question. Like I don't have any kids, but I, I'm just wondering as a man to man, you how did you and I'm sure that, you know, with the with the uh George Floyd and everything that's going on right now in the world, what's that conversation? I mean, with your daughters as well, but for them to see George Floyd, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like what was that what was that conversation like or even if have y'all had that conversation? Um, to be honest with you, I haven't had that conversation with them. You know, okay, but I would let them know what racism is. But we have my mom had that conversation with them. It's kind of tough to have a conversation with me. I mean, with them because it's just still for me to see that with George Floyd it was kind of wow. breaking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like I don't even want to try to even. But I, I talked to them besides what happened. I yeah. talked to them on the record about of what course. they should and should not do. So just talking to them about that, I didn't tell them. I ain't yeah. Yeah. Like, damn, that shit was just so crazy. It was tough. Yeah. Was tough. Yeah. And, and, and 
it's, it's and how, how all this stuff is just happening right now at once when everybody's just locked up in the house. My my thing is now it's like I I don't tell them about that. I tell them really more factual stuff. You know? Okay. Like what I've been brought up on, I I kind of it's all been live for me. So I yeah. just trying to show them differently. Like I just sent them uh, some on the text message to watch. You know, try to let them know that they are kings in this yeah. world. Yeah, absolutely. They try to block you from knowing. And I let my daughter know that she's a real queen. And so yeah, absolutely. I treat, treat her as such. And I try to tell them the importance of saving their money and everything else like that. Like yeah. investing their money. Because they like to get their money and spend it. Like that's my mm-hmm. that's my teachings to them. Like yeah. I try to wake them up in other kind of ways instead of just saying, Man, that's some bullshit for police because it's absolutely. like I, for me, I had to take my time because I got to learn how to put it to them. And I, I don't know how to just speak like off the top of my brain like that when mm-hmm. it, I'm serious. So I had to put it in a way to where they understand. For me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, in, any one of your kids trying to get into music? See, they looking at all them plaques every day. <laughs> I'm saying, are they, are, they, are they touching keyboards? Or? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I got one son. He, he's a basketball lover. Um, okay. I have one son, he's into houses, he's into decorating and building houses yeah. and stuff like that. My daughter, she wanna be a lawyer. And then I have two of my kids that be in this room. One dude be sing one of my sons be singing at a Shantae be in here singing. Yeah. So he be trying to mimic her all the time. He know he don't know that we be hearing him, but right, right, right. he and everything. So he, yeah, yeah. He loves singing and I got another son, he be in here trying to watch me produce when I start making beats and stuff like that. So Nah, that's I, got cool. two, I got two in the music real deep. That's cool. So during quarantine, you picked up any new hobbies or new, new nah, things I, you're doing? Actually, quarantine helped slow me down because I was on the road like every day. Yeah. Every yeah. Week. So, you know, I, I'm able to catch up, you know, and then I'll pick up a new thing by being on the radio every day, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock. So mm-hmm. I, I'm able to do all that. Like probably me being on the road, I wasn't able to pick What up. station what station you on? I'm on hot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all check me out tonight, if y'all if y'all got time, you know what I'm saying? I go I, I know I'm going crazy on the second half, which is probably about eight thirty. I always yeah. check you out, Monte. You yeah. go crazy. Yeah. I'm like, man, how do he how long does it take him to do your mixes is different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The instrumentals with the acapellas and you know, it's you know some DJs do it, but you do it differently and really, really well. I try to, um, you know, because in this industry in the day, you know, they ain't really want introduced to it like how I was. You know what I'm saying? So I be trying to implement some of the old music they they might know about and put it with the shit that's out there. You know, so that's how I like to do it. And I mix some of that shit, even though the music today is not, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm a big fan <laughs> of a few motherfucker, but right. I came from a different era of music, so it's just kind of different for me. So right, right. What new artists are you checking out now? Like, did you do like, all right, I mess it with them. They got a good movement that you're rocking with. I'm rocking with Lil Baby right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Lil Baby, I'm fucking with it, like for real. I love that 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 video. That video. I already like Lil Baby, but that when he dropped that record, uh, what's the name of it? Bigger the bigger picture. picture. Oh my God. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, that that would gave me a whole different respect for him. Cause yeah. I like Bro, goddamn, came at yeah. the right time and dropped that shit. I was like, boy, that shit's so hard. Yeah. Oh, that record. I was like, damn, this shit hard. Yeah. No, I, I love it. And, and he made it, like, he made it so new and so, like, fresh as in, in a sense of, like, it's for the times. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's a double, that's for the times, it's sonically as well as what he's talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But and that's a... The crazy part, I wish it were more of that. My bad for cutting yeah. you off. No, no, no. Of course. Was, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I wish it were more of that. You see how, uh, you know, Tupac was a real activist. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, yep. And he spoke that shit in his, in his lyrics. It's like you felt that shit in his yep. lyrics, in his songs. Like, just don't wait till something happened and then speak on fun. And yeah. like, this shit need to be just put in our brains all the time. So that's what yeah. when, he, when Baby dropped that, I was like, that shit hard, man. That shit crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, so, it's a, and it's a few. Uh, my bad. I just want to say. It's, it's, I was going to say it was. It's just. It ain't too many songs, and I'm. I'm sure you probably feel the same way. It ain't too many songs that I listen to back to back. Like, 
as soon as you hear, like, let me hold on, let me run that back. Let me, you know what I'm saying? Like, we come from air, we like, hold on, let me run that back. Yeah. But if it ain't, if it ain't, if it ain't that now, it's like I'm just cool with. I can listen to it later again or something like. Yeah, but see, I what I do is I. I listen in and get all my inspiration when I work out. So I, I listen to everything. And when I heard that shit come on, I was like, damn, man, he snapped. Like, that's like an inspirational ass song. He is. Yes. And it sounds good. Yeah, how he came in rapping and all that shit. Then it just, it, it was perfect timing, to be honest with you. Because it, it, with all this going on, and he came on with that record. I was like, damn. And then you see him out there with, with the protest shit. With though. the protest, yeah. yeah. That was just perfect, man. That was yeah. perfect setup, perfect layup. And then the song was dope. Yeah. So thus far, what's been your favorite most or your most memorable DJ moment throughout your career? I know um, you probably got a billion of them, but what was that moment that you'll never forget? Um, Me being on the stage with T-Pain and um, we DJing, well, I'm DJing for him and we had a festival of like 100,000 people. Like, you just ain't never seen no shit like this. And then we playing one song, e folks just going one side to the other. That's crazy. You seeing that shit? I was like, damn, man, we up there really just, that was, that was a dream for me. Like, I really wanted to get out the club and see the world. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I just got tired of seeing the same motherfuckers there. That was your first time on the road? Like, um, my first time I've been on the road with Unk before, you know, okay. and I, I was before Unk, I was doing um tours in Germany. Like me and Jetta were doing two two week yeah. tours in Germany and Japan and shit. Like Germany was almost like our second home, to be honest. Yeah. Before any before niggas were actually just going over there. We introduced people to send crime out. This one crime out was hot. Mm -hmm. we introduced them over there, crime out, Rashida. Yeah. All them, then it it became their second home. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So, yeah. Man, we was over there way before this shit. Before, yeah. So were yeah. you were you opening up for Jelly or you 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 was opening up for him? Yeah, me and Jelly. Like I opened up for Jelly on this tour, and then Jelly started closing out the night. Uh, yeah, I got you. Out, yeah, we packed out every night, like the, from the very first night in Germany. Now all this, mind you, it came from just straight up mixtapes. We packed. That's crazy. Yeah, we packed. Every club we were wholesaling mixtapes over there in Germany, and so man, them folks were going crazy over our mixes. They couldn't That's wait crazy. for us to come over there. Do you think the mixtape game is dead now? Um, actually, we got um, we got a site where we're doing mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? Like, how what's we the name do, of that? Uh, mixtapemobsters.com with uh, AZ, and um, right now we we got all our old catalog and we do like where well, I got my new mixes on there. Well, I might take from the radio. Or I do street shit. Like we, we keep it updated. Like we okay. still do. We still do shit. I do DVDs and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's, still, still, it's still a demand. It's still a, <laughs> it's still a demand. <laughs> Bro, you'll be surprised how many folks buy this shit, man. Like dead ass here. We got the USBs too. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's lit. We're going crazy on all that. I love it, man. So what's what's next for you though? What's like what's the what's the next goal or what's the next thing you about to do or if you want to answer both of those? My next goal, uh, I'm gonna say about ten to fifteen more low, get low records. To be honest with you, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That sounds good. Get on that four list. <laughs> that sounds good. Like, I, I want to do some shit like that, but then I also want to open up some schools for blacks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, I love that. Get, like that's what I've been talking about recently to some of my um, colleagues, like that's something I really want to do. Like just seeing what's going on in this world. And I, like we've been misled and it's taught wrong, man. You know, like we haven't been taught the well, we really don't know ourselves. If you go back and look at the history, yes. what black people really are and how a lot of people done came from us, like even from, from China to Mexico to goddamn they all originate from Africa, but then, mm -hmm. you know, I want to be able to teach that to the younger generation and let them know who they really are because we are, this this one reason and one problem that we have going on that we don't know who we really are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are a yeah. powerful individual. That's why yeah. they try to oppress us so bad. I agree. We I get agree. this country, we were the first engineers of this world. We, Max. Um, yeah. We, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Yeah. yeah now right. you're talking. Yeah, bro, like, you know, motherfuckers don't get that education. You know what I'm saying? So. I know they wouldn't want us to do that, but that's something I would want to try to do. 
Yeah. Like I don't know if it's in schools like that, but that's my that's my gotta create it. Create it. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying I don't know if it's any like that, but I really want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm really I'm speaking that into existence. Like that's what I want to do with my next thing and show them how to grow crops, show them how to build shit. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they yeah. money because Absolutely. a lot of us, man, when we go through go to school. We don't never get taught none of that shit. We don't never get taught to invest. Or they brush past it real quick. Yeah. And, and, and this quarantine made people realize like a lot of a lot of people don't have trades. Man, stop. Right. The quarantine, you can go to man, listen, I've been telling folks stocks have been crazy, man. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. That shit still make money. I had that? I had to get in. I had I wanted in. I had to. <laughs> Have to. Yeah. See, this is another thing too, what everybody don't know about life insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. man, when some of these folks pass, they pass leaving their kids some stupid. in debt. Yeah, no, nah, but I ain't gonna say white folks, but they pass leaving their kids with money. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With a crazy amount of money. We might pass. Shit, motherfuckers be asking for ten thousand dollars just to even bury. Just to bury. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Oh, when I say yeah. debt, that means they can't even afford to do the. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Or, I get what you That's saying. what I mean. Yeah, but see, that's that's another thing. Now I, you know, just learn. Me and my mom discussed that without you know wishing anything upon each other. But it's like shit. That's what you. That's how you got to think now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Man, all this quarantine shit done opened me up to a whole bunch of man, shit. Man, we love it, man. It was, yeah, appreciate it. I, it's just been able, like, I've been able to sit down and just really re-educate myself, which I'm still learning a lot of shit. I'm so far behind. How did online teaching go for you? Uh Oh, well, shit. They were, my kids were with their mom. So, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have to go through that thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a math person. I ain't up the yeah, I ain't no English. I ain't no yeah. goddamn social. <laughs> I ain't no none of that, man. Don't ask me none about hey, it. Hey, hey, Monte, you say you know how to count that set. That's it. That's all. That's all. I don't know how, 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 how to count money. That's it. Bro. Right. I, don't, I don't know the English. My right. language is so fucked up, bro. I don't yeah. know none of it. So. Yeah, man. Well, look, man, we just appreciate you just trying to get better. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know what I'm saying? I like what you said about the schools in any way. Whenever you get it rolling, let us know. We definitely jazz in facts. We on we'll make a, a, a generous donation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I really absolutely. just trying to set it up where well, it's free education for everybody. You know what uh, I'm saying? That's that's, yeah. that's what Canada do. They do that. Mm -hmm. They yeah. what is it free? What is one of them free health care or free education? One of them in Canada. See, man, we gotta look out for our own. You gotta look at how everybody look out for their own. Chinese yeah. folks look out for their own. Jews look out for their own. Italians yeah. look out for their own. Whites look yeah. out for their own. We the only people be like, we got a black day. Support your own people. Like, <laughs> like, we one day, we're gonna do it for one day. We're gonna do it for one day. <laughs> no, man. See, that's that's, that's what your... we gotta got turn that shit around, though, bro. That's... Yeah, I gotta switch to break the cycle. Break the cycle. Yeah, I know. But hey. Better days will come. Absolutely. But how can we get in contact with you, Monte? We want to follow your movement. Shout out your socials, where we can check you out during the mix shows and all that. Uh, you can follow my Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook uh, at DJ Monte, M-O-N-T-A-Y. That's everything across the board. Um, you can follow me on Hot 107.9. I come on Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock. Y'all check me out on that. Which jazz? I know you be checking me out. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get on it. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I've heard it before though. But well, see the, the new day and age. Y'all listen to the. the all y'all got. Stream. Yeah, yeah, I listen. I can't lie. I don't I even listen to the radio. I don't even listen to the radio at all, bro. I can't. Man, I already it. know. I know folks that really don't. Then y'all yeah. can check out my mixes too on www.mixtapemobsters. Uh, M O B S T A Z dot com. Man, so you know, shit. I'm there with. Man, thank you for blessing us, my brother. Now, I appreciate y'all for having me. Appreciate yes, it. Sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna get your I'm gonna get your number from Jazzy too. Oh yeah, that's it's all we're, we're gonna lock Jazzy, in. Got it. No, I DM me, yeah, DM me all the information and we'll figure all of that out. Oh yeah, I forgot recording. Like, okay. sure <laughs> no, that's cool, that's cool. We can edit all that. We can edit all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the edit thing out. Yeah, nah, this is all good. <laughs> 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 right, man. It's been another episode of Jazzy and Facts. On wax, on wax. baby. Oh, man, it's just so